here we go. This question says, it would be nice if Kevin could go over a real example from start to finish to understand exactly what his thoughts and decisions are after the data is reviewed. I know this is kind of a vague request and every business is different, but it would be ideal to pick a, a business scenario and analyze it from start to finish. And then hear Kevin's thoughts or reasons or recommendations on that business. So what I'm gonna do here is I am going to take over the screen. All right, and I am going to share a little presentation. I'm going to, well, we're not, don't look at this, don't look yet. Okay, all right. So there might be a little bit of a box here that's kind of blocking your view that shouldn't be terribly important. Um, but what I'm going to do is this is an actual client. So this is an actual project I worked on. I stripped out 80% of the stuff I did for them because I want to keep this simple and go over this over a short period of time. So for the next 10 minutes or so, I'm going to actually share the elements of this analysis I did for this client. And what's interesting is this client had lots of the biases and complaints that you would expect the client to have that, were, that came up in the question part of our program. So this client has a sales problem. So, you know, what, one of the first things I do is I like to look at a rolling 12 month view of customer behavior. Um, I, like, I like to put it into a table so that I have um, all the information that I want to analyze and I can share the whole table at one time in case people have questions. But beyond the table, I then like to look at graphs that highlight some of the key issues that I'm seeing. So this is the annual sales. And if I go from early 2016, basically through early 2020 for this project, this business went from about 385 million in sales down to 330 million in sales. So this business lost 20% of its sales over the course of a four year period of time. So this is a business that is suffering and is basically dying. So the CEO wanted me to come in and understand what were the things that were causing this business to struggle and fail. So clearly this business is having a problem, okay? I looked at rolling 12 month number of buyers. So in our rolling 12 month analysis, I count how many customers have purchased in total. This business used to have 3.2 million people buying from it. It's down out about 2.8 million people buying from it. So you see here about a, we saw about a 20% decrease in sales we're seeing here a 10% decrease in customers. So as an analyst, this should already tip you off that there is going to be something you're gonna to wanna to focus on as you go through this project. If the number of buyers don't change at the same rate that sales change, it tells you they are doing something funky with customers. There's a relationship between customers and products that you're gonna to have to focus on, okay? I then went and looked at what I would call annual repurchase rates. So for this business, their annual repurchase rates used to be about 32%. Three years ago, they were 32%. Now they're down to 30%. They actually dipped under 30%. So what mode is this business in? It's in acquisition mode, isn't it? So we can already see that this business is going to have to focus on new and reactivated customers if it wants to be successful. Losing a two ten a two point drop here in repurchase rates, that is not a big deal. I mean, it's it's bad, but it's not the reason this business is down twenty percent from where it used to be. That's so. So you want to always put these metrics in context. Also, somebody is going to ask when they see something like this, they're going to say, "Well, we need to get customers to be more loyal. We need to focus on our most loyal customers." And the answer to that is, you can do that but it doesn't solve your core problem. Someone will say, well, this 29.7% repurchase rate, that we can get that up to 45 or 50%. I go back to the past three years and I will say that it, with this client, this is what I did. I looked at the executive team because I met on their campus. And I said, how many of you have been with this business for the past three years? And about 90% of the 10 people in the room, nine out of 10 people raised their hand. And I said, don't you think you have exhausted every idea you have to make customers become more loyal? And they all looked at me with a blank stare. And I said, if you had a great idea to increase loyalty, you would have already implemented it. 
You would have. This was a business that was that, that was created in the 1970s. They, I went back and looked at this business from, they sent me transactions going back into the late 1990s when they retained about 36% of their customers. So they have always had this repurchase rate. It never changes. It doesn't matter who's running the company. This is what the business is. The products the company sells dictate the repurchase rate. The marketer might be able to take a 30% repurchase rate and make it 34%. If the marketer did that, the marketer's done an incredible job, but they didn't make it 60%. So this business has had, has slightly lower loyalty over time. I then went and looked at the number of new and reactivated buyers over the past three years. Okay, so remember, this business is in acquisition mode. And yet when I look here, the most important thing you should be doing in acquisition mode is finding new customers. This business is losing new customers every single year. They have fewer and fewer and fewer new customers. So this is a big issue. When you're in acquisition mode, you cannot be successful unless you are growing the number of new and reactivated buyers. So I already know that there's likely a marketing issue here with new and reactivated buyers. And I'm going to need to go and talk to the executive team about what they've done with their marketing budget. In this case, they, have, they actually lowered their marketing budget because business was sinking. They said they couldn't spend as much on marketing. So they cut out their paid search budget. They cut out some of their national advertising budget. And as a result, when they cut out those things, they got fewer and fewer customers. When they got fewer customers, they got less sales. And when they got less sales, they said, we have to reduce the marketing budget more because we have less sales. So when I see these metrics align like this, I'm gonna ask them about the marketing strategy because in this case, the marketing strategy was helping fuel the problems. I then looked at the number of annual orders per buyer. Their customer buys about one and a half times per year. And as you can see over four years, that hasn't changed. So the customer continues to buy the same number of times per year. It doesn't matter what they do, what strategies they have, what products they offer, that never changes. So they're not going to change it. And I need to share this with them so that I get them to focus back on getting new customers. Okay, what do you see here? This is the annual number of items per order. Four years ago, the customer was buying 11 items per order. Today, the customer is buying nine and a half items per order. That's a problem, isn't it? What I wanna do is I wanna share with you the next graph which is always directly related to this. So this is the number of items per order. This is the price for every item that the customer purchased. What do you see here? The customer went from buying items that cost $7.55 to items that now cost $8.50. This relationship between items per order decreasing, price per item increasing, comes up in 75% of my projects. Sometimes it's the inverse of this, where the items are getting cheaper, so customers are buying more items. Most of the time, when a business is struggling, someone says we got to increase our gross margin dollars so that we're more profitable. Therefore, when we issue new items or new products, new merchandise, those items are going to be at $8.50, whereas the items that have always sold are at $7.50. When I see this relationship, I know there's going to be a product issue. And we're going to have to have a talk with the merchandising team and the finance people about what is driving that. So in this case, again, items per order decreasing, price per item purchased increasing. If the multiplication of these two metrics is an increase, the relationship is good and you don't worry about it so much. So we can, the multiplication of these two metrics is average order value. What do you see here? You see over time, average order value is basically down a couple of dollars. And it looks like in the past year, there's been some improvement here. But on average, customers are not, the relationship between buying fewer items, but buying items that are more expensive has resulted in the customer overall spending a little bit less. So the initiative to get more gross margin dollars out of the customer is not working as well as management would like. And on an annual basis, then when I multiply all the metrics together, the average customer is purchasing used to spend $121, today is spending about 117. So all the changes that this brand has made have hurt how much customers are buying. 
So we know that repurchase rates are down. We know that customers are spending less if they were buying. And we know that new and reactivated customer accounts are down. So the way we're gonna fix this business from a marketing standpoint is we're gonna have to have a good program to find new and reactivated customers. What I do want you to focus on is in the past year, look at the, from February of 2019, December of 2019, sales per buyer actually started to increase. It went up by $3. So my instinct when I see this is that somebody in management has made a decision on some strategy and that strategy appears to be working. And so this is where I start to go into what I call my comp segment framework to try and ferret out that issue. So this is my comp segment analysis for new and reactivated buyers, where I'm looking every month what happened for new and reactivated buyers. And what I see is in the past year that this company kept cutting back on their marketing dollars. And as a result, they kept getting fewer and fewer new and reactivated buyers. They're getting the exact opposite trend that they need. So I know that there's a marketing issue here. I'm going to have to talk about with marketing. When I look at good customers, I see something different. With good customers, I'm seeing a spending increase that started in February of, I'm sorry, it started in September of 2019 and carried through for the rest of the year. Something changed between August of 2019 and September of 2019. So now as an analyst, I want to dig into that a little bit and I want to see what changed because I'm going to, I can't go to this executive team and tell them that they're horrible and everything they're doing is awful. It's obvious they did something. They changed something and there's starting to be a glimmer of hope. So I will say I did my comp segment table for new items and for existing items. And what do you see here for new merchandise? Basically in April of 2019, something changed and customers were buying a lot more new merchandise than they were the year before. And by the time you got into September, October, November, December 2019, and January 2020, customers are spending a ton more on new merchandise. So now I know that the merchandising team has made a change. And that change that the merchandising team made is now contributing to your better customers starting to spend more. So undoubtedly, somebody in this business got yelled at or they hired a new product team and that team is starting to make a difference and starting to, starting to have positives. If I look at existing merchandise, existing merchandise does not have quite the same relationship. Items that have always sold are wobbling around. You see in September, they're, they're around zero. October, they're a little bit better. November, they're below. December was really good. January is back to bad. And before August, before, before September, 2019, the numbers were negative. So now this tells me there's likely a marketing strategy and there's a merchandising strategy. It is likely because the existing merchandise started to sell better in September of 2019, it is likely that the marketing team started to do something different. In this case, this business has a strong print component. And so they likely did something to market to the customer more often. They changed potentially their email marketing programs. They may have implemented a personalization program on, on email campaigns and on home and landing pages to cause this. So I now see that there are a couple of different trends here. I know that the merchandising team made changes in calendar 2019 for new merchandise and that is working. I know that the marketing team likely made some changes starting in September 2019 and that strategy is working. And therefore I now have a positive message that I can start to communicate to management. I then look at why a welcome program would be important. For this brand, if a customer buys for the first time, they have a 23% chance of buying again within a year. That is a really low number. So when customers are coming into this business, three out of four of them are flunking out and you lose them after that first purchase. So this company needs to have a strong focus on the first three months after a customer buys something so that that business has a chance of succeeding and moving customers along to loyal status. By the time the customer gets to a fourth purchase, they have a 63% chance of buying within a year. That customer is loyal. The biggest challenge this company has is there's no marketing process in place to deal with a customer in those first three months to get them to buy for a second time. So this business desperately needs a welcome program. They actually have loyal customers. If the customer can run the gauntlet and get to a fourth purchase, that customer is actually pretty loyal. This table here is called a class of table. 
So we talked about this in the coursework. I like to look at when merchandise was introduced. And what I see is if I look across items that were introduced 37 to 48 months ago, in their first year, those items did $31 million. And then follow down the diagonal and items that were introduced 25 to 36 months ago, those items generated $26 million in their first year. Items introduced 13 to 24 months ago, those items generated $23 million in their first year. This business was hemorrhaging sales. So remember, sales were down you know, $50, $60 million. One of the big reasons for it is that this business was not introducing enough new items, or if they were introducing new items like 13 to 24 months ago, they introduced 17,000 new items and those items performed terribly. They were horrible, only generating $23 million in sales. What you also see is that if you have an item that does well, it pays you back in interest in the subsequent years. So the sins of having poor new merchandise years two years ago, one year ago, those items then in their next year also perform poorly. And so you are losing five or $10 million per year per merchandising class. And what you see is in the past year here, they introduced 19,000 new items. You can tell somebody got the message and those items generated $31 million in sales. They have reversed the problem. Much of their problem that they have right now is a merchandising problem or a product problem that happened two to three years ago and they're dealing with the impact of it today. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna quickly go back up to one of the first slides that I shared. All right, so this is sales. This is a number of buyers and those net metrics didn't look good. But all of a sudden here, when I'm looking at average order value, in the past year, average order value is looking good. The annual amount of the customer spends is starting to look good in the past year. So all these changes that this brand is making is starting to pay off. And the new merchandise that they have put in in the past year is starting to fix the problem. It's just that the problems that they created two and three years ago were so severe that it's hurting what is happening today. So they are actually on a path to fix this business and that's a big positive. Okay, what I wanna show you here is the price of a new item. I've labeled these in red. So the new items that they introduced three to four years ago were introduced at $7.47 on average. The year after, $7.91. The year after that, $8.47. The year after that, $9.16. Their product team is constantly trying to raise prices and customers are rebelling against it. And fortunately, even though they have expensive items this year at $9.16, customers are starting to like it. So they were liking what they were offering and so there is some information here that is suggesting that they're starting to turn the corner. So when I'm presenting this to an executive team, I will see that sales are consistently slumping and they already know that. Their repurchase rates clearly put them in acquisition mode. Their customer acquisition program is failing. You can have failing products and still have a strong customer acquisition program. And as a result, your business is successful. I have a client that does this. They have had terrible product issues for about five years, but the marketing team always brings in more new customers to, and causes their business to grow. They grow by five to 10% while their merchandise is getting five or 10% worse every year. So marketing plays a role in fixing this. You have orders per buyer are flat, items per order are decreasing, price per item purchase is increasing. That's a tough combination to get over. However, your comp segment analytics show that customers are buying more on new merchandise. That's a huge positive. We saw in this analysis that the welcome program is badly needed. Only 23% of first time buyers purchase again within a year. This company has to do something to get a customer to a second, third, fourth purchase. There's no sense in focusing on loyalty if you can't get the first customer to buy, first time buyer to buy again. We saw earlier that there were too few items that were new items that were offered in prior years. And two years ago, we saw that there were a ton of new items and customers hated them. So there is a product issue and that the product team is now solving the issue in the past year. And we also saw that prices of new items are dramatically higher. This is likely suppressing response rates and sales levels. So I couldn't prove it in this analysis, but it's something I would tell the executive team that I saw happening. And that was something that I think that they need to focus on. If you want more expert insights like this, subscribe to our channel.